What's up guys? Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. As you can see behind me, today we are going to be doing a review on the new Mustang Mach-E. All right guys, so as you can see, we are here at Blackout Tinting. Yes, kind of an interesting place to do a car review, I know, but Josh managed to get his hands on a brand new Mustang Mach-E, which for those of you who don't know, is the new Mustang SUV. So not only is it the SUV, it is also fully electric. Now, like I said, we are here at Blackout Tinting and this particular car has actually been provided to Blackout Tinting by Town & Country Ford in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. So if you guys are interested, this particular model is actually for sale. Head over to their website. I'll link it in the description down below and you might be able to own this particular one. This is the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E, which is the crossover or SUV version of the Mustang Coupe. It is all wheel drive. It has the ability of running 270 miles on one full charge due to the extended range battery that this particular model has. With the extended range model, it has 98.8 kilowatt per hour battery, 376 lithium ion cells, but only 88 kilowatts are actually usable. The batteries are liquid cooled. The zero to 60 acceleration is going to be in the mid five second range for this particular model. And if you're wondering, well, that doesn't seem like that great of performance out of a Mustang kind of SUV. Well, guess what? The GT Performance Edition does the zero to 60 in mid three seconds. So if you're a guy who has to have an SUV, but you also want to have that thrilling acceleration, get the GT. The extended range all wheel drive version, which is the one we have sitting here, has 346 horsepower and 428 pound feet of torque, which is absolutely freaking incredible for an electric vehicle. Now, again, if you go with the GT Performance Edition, that is gonna get bumped up to 459 horsepower and 612 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, let that soak in for a second. With this particular car, you can charge this from 10 to 80% in about 38 to 45 minutes. Ford states that this vehicle will seat five people. The cargo space behind the rear seat is 29 cubic feet. Cargo space in the first row is 59.6 cubic feet. The front trunk is 4.8 cubic feet. Overall length is 186 inches. Overall width is 74 inches. The overall height is 63 inches and the wheelbase is 117 inches. Warranty on this particular car is eight years or 100,000 miles. Very impressive. This is the premium version, meaning that the price starts at around $50,000 before options. So as you guys can tell, this has a white exterior. We'll get into the actual details of what this particular paint is called in a second. I just kind of want to do a little bit of a once over here for you guys to see exactly what this exterior looks like, because this is one of those things that the Mustang purists out there probably aren't overly thrilled about. An SUV called a Mustang, but at the same time, it is kind of evolution. Because for any of you out there who are fans of a Corvette, you'll know that there is heavy rumors flying around the internet right now suggesting that the Corvette is going to follow the same suit here. So very likely we are going to get a Corvette SUV very soon and probably it's probably going to be an electric car as well. So this is the future, I guess. And to get into the details a little bit, we have the Mustang Mach-E. Obviously it is a 2021. It claims five passengers, an 88 kilowatt an hour battery, single speed transmission, and the exterior is star white metallic tri-coat. Interior is black perfect rated active x because we can't just have a regular black interior it's got to have a fantastic name but guys check this out the fuel economy <laughs> that's insane like i love seeing that kind of stuff because yeah this this is the future these kind of cars literally are the future like it or not electric is where we are heading so yeah we look at city is 96 miles per gallon e and then we have the 84 for highway so no matter where you're driving this thing you're going to get some fantastic miles per gallon especially since you're not really putting any gas in this this is fully electric and with a battery that size ford claims about 270 miles out of a full charge. So to go over this a little bit more in detail, we have the standard equipment here. The optional options is where stuff gets fun. That's down here. The star white metallic tri-coat paint is an additional $600. The interior protection package, which is obviously for the cargo area, the floor mats and all that good stuff is an extra $240. Now the $5,000 option here looks like an 88 kilowatt battery and also the 225 55 R19 all season tires. 
At the end of the day, we have about $6,000 worth of extra options on this car that you would not have to get if you didn't opt for them. So the total MSRP of this particular car is $56,640, which is actually a lot less than I would have thought whenever I first started reading about this car. So let's start out with all of the exterior kind of quirks and features. We'll throw a Doug DeMuro style at this thing. Right off the bat, the first thing you notice about pretty much any electric car is the front end because of the lack of grill or open surface area on the front to actively cool the car. Instead, you get just nothing. <laughs> just a plain white exterior. Everything is covered up. There is really no ventilation whatsoever. So it doesn't come across overly sporty looking. It doesn't have that aggressive look that a real big grill would offer on like a Cadillac or even on like the newer Camaros. You're not getting anything. You're just getting this giant Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> which I guess for some people that's a pretty cool look. Now at the same time there is a bunch of technology here so obviously right above that Mustang we have a camera so right off the bat you can easily see what you're about to hit or hopefully not hit in this case. We also have parking sensors along the bottom here that will beep let you know you're getting close to something probably one of those parking dividers right there on the bottom lip. And then of course, moving up, we have what I would imagine are some serious LED headlights. We will turn those on a little bit later. Very reminiscent of your typical Mustang coupe, which is exactly what Ford is going for here. They want this to look like a Mustang, but act like an SUV and act like an electric car. So this is what we get. Now, obviously with that white metallic paint, we have black accents and these are actually painted black accents. They're not black plastic or cheap looking in any way shape or form they are painted so it really helps accent especially on white with the black mirrors black top which is actually a full glass not a sunroof but it is panoramic looking i guess similar to some of the teslas now when we get inside guys you are really going to see why i keep comparing this to a tesla and since we are at the front end of the car let's go ahead and pop this massive freaking hood and see all the storage that we have under here yeah or not so this suv is obviously all-wheel drive so i would imagine there is a motor under here kind of limiting the space or cargo room but as you guys can see there's actually less cargo room in the the front trunk here than i have on my c8 corvette which is very interesting because this is a much bigger car and at the end of the day it's an suv so you would imagine there would be a lot of storage room here we have the brake fluid the fuse box and even a battery up here that is covered with the plastic panel. While we're talking about the exterior, let's take a look at the wheels. This is the particular wheel design on this Mustang, and it's not the greatest, but I've seen worse. Now, what's interesting is that the entire SUV gets 225 55 R19s all the way around. And these are, of course, Michelin all-season tires. And right above the driver's side tire is where we have our charging port. So not a lot to see in here, but you got your charging port and then the little button to push to pop that out and that's how we gas up this new mustang with some good old-fashioned electricity but it is just a push to open push to close there's not a whole lot of concern here about anybody dumping sugar or anything into this particular gas tank again on the side of the car the wheel wells are all painted black and we also have kind of a strip under here to mimic what can only be described as a side skirt and it is also painted black to match with the fender flares. The trim around the windows, painted black. It's not rubber, it's not plastic, it's not chrome. This is painted black along here. The top is kind of the same story. This is all painted black up to where you can actually see the glass roof actually starts up there. And then we also have our black shark fin. Moving around to the back of this Mustang, we can see what can only be described as a very Mustang-esque appearance again. So we have the same kind of taillights you're gonna find on a lot of the Mustang coupes with that three individual light pattern. And then of course, your giant Mustang smack dead in the middle, which actually has a little bit of a texture to it. And again, right above that, another camera. So we got a backup camera as well as a front camera going on to bring everything up to current day standards. Along the back, we have where the diffuser would be, some more painted black surface that will wrap around the car and blend into the side skirts and wheel wells. The backup light is of course down here at the bottom of the diffuser along with the 
backup sensors. Now, one thing to keep in mind, guys, I keep calling this thing an SUV, but this is technically a crossover. So it is not a very large car. It's actually pretty small. So standing beside it, it doesn't feel that much larger than a normal car, minus the fact that it's a four door and has a lot of internal storage. And here is the promise shot of the headlights on. Definitely a menacing approach. They look really nice. They look very Mustang. From the front with the four ways on, just to give you guys an idea of how the turn signals look, they are sequential. So they start full on and then kind of glide up to the outside. Very Mustang approach here because in the rear, something tells me we're gonna have the exact same approach. And anybody who knows Mustangs, they know the rear turn signals are always sequential like that. Very cool though. I like this little extra addition right here. So it looks a lot like a Mustang, obviously it's called a Mustang, but at the same time, it has its own identity here with very slight differences like this. With the outside mirrors, we also get blind spot detection as well as a turn signal built into the mirror itself. So that's it of the exterior, guys. Let's jump into the interior. This is where things start to really get in interesting because right off the bat, we have a button here to push. And when we push it, it pops open the door. Now they actually give you this little pull handle right here to pull it open the rest of the way. But very interesting that in the future, apparently we don't have door handles anymore. So we get push buttons instead. But on the interior, everything looks pretty good. This all feels really nicely appointed in leather. Now, if you guys have not driven a Tesla before, I was actually recently in a Model X and this is where I really felt like the Tesla dropped the ball. The interior was really plasticky, really cheap feeling. This one feels much more quality. Now, I think that's funny considering you can get this Mustang for a fraction of the price that the Model X is, and yet the interior is much nicer already, and I haven't even sat in the car yet. Before we climb in, we'll talk about the sound system for a minute. It is by B&O. It is a 10-speaker sound system. B&O is a company I haven't really heard of in the past before, but recently has been popping up in a lot of my searches. So it must be a decent sound system. We'll test that out in a second. But at first glance, guys, the interior looks pretty good. We are greeted with a sill plate here that clearly says Mustang, still wrapped in the factory plastic. And even though this area down here has a little bit of dirt, it is also wrapped in the factory plastic. So do not fear. This is not how you would get the car. Now, how you will get the car though, is beautifully ceramic coated. That's why it's here at Blackout Tinning. They were ceramic coating this car and it looks absolutely perfect. I'm not sure how well that will come through on camera, but just look at that reflection. It's absolutely amazing, guys. If you need any work like that, you definitely wanna check out Blackout Tinning in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. But anyway, let's move on to the interior here. Again, all very nicely appointed in here with leather and some nice double stitching right on the dash some faux carbon fiber, but still very nice quality stuff. The seats are still kind of wrapped in plastic. I don't really want to take that off there, but the little bit that I can see right here looks pretty nicely high quality, pretty nicely stitched, all leather, really, really supple stuff here, guys. Looking into the interior, obviously we're greeted with these two gigantic screens because yeah, this is the future. This is an electric car. We don't need any analog gauges anymore. So here we are on the interior. And as you can see, we got two infrared lights lighting up right there to see if there is a driver in here, I'm assuming. But let's go ahead and just turn the car on to accessory power and check out these screens when they light up. Look at that. <laughs> that is very impressive. Gigantic screen, very, very, very Tesla-like. Now, same thing up here. Obviously, my the hood is ajar, but still, interesting approach to this whole thing. So very, very thin, very wide, but not so thick screen here for your normal driving situation. But this is where this thing really shines. I mean, look at this. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. Basically, you're driving around a car with a giant TV in the center. Outside of that, though, we have a really nicely bolstered steering wheel. Very much so needed Mustang logo on the steering wheel, which is actually in piano black. And so is this trim here. No chrome that I've seen on this interior. All black accents, which is really cool. Now, obviously we have our buttons over here for cruise control, adaptive cruise control, your volume up and down. All the necessities are here, so you're not losing anything as far as that's concerned. Again, another very piano black accent at the bottom of the three spoke steering wheel. Moving on, like I said, the dash is in really nice shape. You really, you feel like you're in an SUV when you sit in this thing. You can really see you're sitting kind of high visibility out the front and the sides is pretty good. I don't see any problems with that. Up here at the mirror, we actually get very clearly what this is. It is a frameless auto dim mirror. 
I mean, in case you didn't know that that's what it was, now you know. It looks pretty nice though. I, I always like the frameless approach. The rest of the dash, we get another indication that that is a B&O speaker system with some more faux carbon fiber. And then down in the center console, we get some serious storage, two cup holders, our gear select, park, reverse, neutral, and drive. Then we have the ability to turn off our parking assist, the hazard lights, and our e-brake. Now beyond that, we have, of course, center console lid to put your arm on while you're driving, or you can lift it up and reveal some more storage. So this is where we're talking about the SUV stuff here. It's all about storage. And this is pretty nice. Have something that opens and closes like that. You can still put stuff on top of it while it's closed and then just put your center console back down. Over on the passenger side, we have the actual glove box and it is just your typical glove box. Nothing special about this one. So one of the things I'm noticing about the interior right off the bat, guys, is the seats are very comfortable. Very, very comfortable seat. This is definitely something you could take a long drive in and still be comfortable at the end of the day. We have over here 89% and then our giant bar suggesting 89% as well. 171 miles until empty, basically. The compass there showing we're facing east, automatic high beams, the headlights are on, and over here the car has 43 miles on it, and then of course your gear select indication here. On the left of the steering wheel, we have our turn signal stock. And over on the right, we have the ability to control the windshield wipers and the speed of them. Now, like I said, the screen in the middle is where things really get interesting. There is a lot to cover here. I'm not gonna go crazy into detail with this. I think for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can obviously adjust the temperature. The volume is actually a dial, which I think is really cool because that's in the middle of the actual screen. And then right here, we can turn on or off the heated seats or leave it on automatic. And same with the steering wheel. Fan speed right here. I'm gonna turn that down just not to ruin the video. And that's pretty much it. I mean, everything else is gonna be the same. I'm not gonna go through this in great detail. Like I said, you're gonna have your radio, your GPS, your backup camera, and even a little picture of the Mustang. Your temperature outside, all that good stuff is gonna be in here, but this thing is freaking massive. I mean, that my with my hand covering the top part of it, you still have like another hand and a half at the bottom. It is a gigantic screen. But up at the top, if we do touch that Mustang logo, you can see first off, it shifts a little bit. And then we get the options of engage, whisper, or unbridled performance here in drive modes. You get your camera, which is obviously a 360 degree camera, your backup camera, your front facing cameras, all of them are used here to give you an idea of what's all the way around you. I know I'm getting a little bit more in detail with this than I wanted to, but I don't know. This stuff's cool to me. And then of course we even have the valet option here. One pedal drive, ambient lights selection. Yeah, a lot of stuff here, guys. I'm not gonna go crazy into it. This is supposed to just be kind of an overview of the car. To get out of this car, there is actually this little handle right here. You gotta pull it towards you. And this is what you're greeted with. Yeah, we're living in the future, guys. When the lights are on, you also get lit up your keypad here to enter the car without your key and the actual button that you use to open up the door lights up as well so you can see it at night moving to the back seat the same kind of thing you got the button to push to open up the door and this is the cargo room i was talking about earlier so in the back it is all covered up with plastic i don't want to uncover this stuff but you're going to see a very high quality seat i can already feel it's the same kind of material the front seats are made out of so it's all leather very very comfortable to sit in then you have your center pull down here which exposes two cup holders which can obviously go back up into the actual seat in the center of the back seat we obviously have the ability to direct air and there is a usb-c and a usb-a charging port right down there. On the back doors, we get another speaker as well as the same way to get in and out of the car. It doesn't look like we have any heated seats in the rear though. And at the rear hatch area, you can actually open it up with the button right there. Just by pressing that button right around the license plate area, it will open up the hatch for you. Now again, this is a crossover, so it's not gonna have as much storage capacity as an SUV, but this is what we get back here. These are all the floor mats, the actual rubber floor mats that were optioned underneath it. Because this is a brand new car, a lot of this stuff hasn't been unpacked yet. There is also a light in the rear hatch area that conveniently has a little Mustang logo right in the center of it. Over here on the right, we get a 12 volt power supply. So if you wanted to hook that up at a tailgating party or something, you could. But other than that, kind of uneventful. There's a shade here that will protect your belongings if you have anything of importance back here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Up at the top left, we can press this button right there to go ahead and close that. You don't have to 
be archaic and slam it with your arm anymore. You don't have to put your hand in a grab pocket and pull it down. It will do the work for you. Overall, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Josh, big thank you to Blackout Tinning for inviting us up here and taking a look at this car. Like I said, guys, check out his YouTube channel. Check out his shop. I mean, this shop is gorgeous. I've been here a couple different times, as you guys may know, but I can't say enough good things about them. Thank you again, Josh. Thank you, Justin. But guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. So if you wanted to see more of the Mustang Mach-E, jump over to Blackout Tinning's channel. They're gonna have a bunch of videos showing ceramic coating and all of the, the guys here at the shop, what they think of the car. I'm gonna wrap this video up though, because it has already gotten way too long. If you guys like what you saw, please give me a big thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm gonna have loads of content like this, car reviews, Corvette stuff, anything you can possibly imagine is gonna be on my channel. You're gonna to wanna to check it out. And as always guys, I will catch you in the next upload.